I'm Andy Larson, the Most Control and Robotics Product Manager for the Automation Group of Cross Company. Here at Cross, we specialize in applying technology to improve machine and process performance. One of the technologies that has been of great interest to our automation customers is a new class of industrial robots produced by Universal Robots. I get asked many times who is Universal Robots. Uh, they're a Danish company that has been in business since 2006 and they were founded with the goal of providing human scale robotic solutions that can be affordably and easily implemented by small to medium sized manufacturers. Currently there are over 2,500 units in operation around the world and it turns out that it's just not the small to medium sized manufacturers that have implemented this technology but folks like BMW, Bosch, Lear, VW, even Samsung. They established their distribution channel here in North America back at the beginning of 2012 and have their U.S. office located up in Long Island, New York. The other question that I get asked quite frequently is what is a force limited or collaborative robot? The UR5 and UR10 robots from Universal are part of a new class of robots called collaborative or force limited. Simply put, they are inherently unable to produce enough force to cause serious injury. In the case of the UR solution, they are limited to producing just 150 newtons of force at the tool plate. Obviously, this does not mean that the robot can be operated unguarded in all cases, but for those applications that pass a safety risk assessment, according to the most recent RIA and ISO safety standards, it does mean that they can be operated without additional safety guarding. Currently, it is estimated that 80% of all UR installations are operating without a safety cage or additional guarding. For the end user, this can vastly simplify the installation. It will certainly lower the cost of installation by at least half to two-thirds when compared to a typical robot. At the same time, this will also save the end user a significant amount of floor space. To give you a quick overview of the hardware, there are currently only two part numbers, the UR5 and the UR10. Each robot comes with the arm, the controller, the teach pendant, and the necessary cables. The UR5 has a 5 kilogram payload, the UR10, 10, 10 kilograms. Both robots have an average speed of approximately 1 meter per second and operate off of 110 or 220 single phase power. They essentially use about the same amount of power as a couple of light bulbs. The robot arms weigh 41 pounds and 64 pounds respectively, and the controller will weigh about 25 pounds. Uh, the reach on the UR5 is roughly 33 and a half inches and the UR1051. The robots themselves are designed to be safe and portable, which would allow you to easily relocate the robot to where your production needs are at any given time, thus giving the user the ability to get the most return out of their automation investment. Everywhere where you see a blue cap, that's a joint. Each joint can rotate plus or minus 360 degrees, essentially two revs. In each joint, it contains a Brussels servo motor, a 100 to 1 harmonic gear drive, and two encoders. The encoders, one will be on the back of the motor and the other one will be on the opposite side of the joint. This dual encoder configuration is one of the key features that allows the robot to limit its force. Essentially, the robot is constantly monitoring the compliance in each joint of the robot as compared to the expected position. This, thus, it allows it to sense when a collision is taking place. Both robots have a positional repeatability of plus or minus four thousandths of an inch or 0.1 millimeters. The control box consists of two power converters, a main board, and a fanless industrial PC that runs Linux off of the two gigabyte compact flashcards. The system's going to have ten digital inputs, ten digital outputs, four analog inputs, and two analog outputs. In terms of field bus communications, currently its main protocols are Modbus TCP and Ethernet sockets. These communications capabilities will allow it to communicate virtually with any controller on the market today. These robots are considered to be maintenance free and have an estimated life of 35,000 hours. That is over 17 2,000 hour work years. For most installation that will result in less than two dollars per hour of operation. Should there ever be an issue with the robot or the controller they have been designed to be repaired in the field. On the robot arm if there is a joint failure it's a matter of removing 8 to 12 bolts disconnecting two electrical connectors and reattaching a new joint. Depending on which joint it is, this process could take anywhere between 15 to 45 minutes. All in all, the intention of the design was to keep it simple, 
if there's a problem that comes up and it doesn't need to be sent back to the factory or require a specially trained technician to fix it. Although everyone we have spoken to about this technology is intrigued with the concept of being able to run an industrial robot cage-free, what really keeps their attention is how easy it is to program. I've asked Grady Turner to come in and actually show you a simple pick-and-place application. We've shown this robot to literally hundreds of different customers, and to date, we haven't had one person that wasn't able to program a typical pick-and-place application. Literally, if someone can operate a smartphone, they can program the robot. For most applications, the programming can be done solely with the interactive teach pendant. UR's PolyScope interface allows you to program the robot to do all the things that you would typically expect from an industrial robot, like joint moves, linear moves, process moves, set up variables, create multiple coordinate systems based on application features, even set up the field bus communications, or use pre-built palletizing wizards. You can even set up multiple programming threads that allow you to monitor I.O. or do other machine control while the main robot program is running. And should you ever need it, there's also a very full-featured scripting language. One of the most unique features about the UR solution is the button on the back of the teach pendant. When pressed, the switch puts the robot into a gravity-free mode that allows the robot arm to be drug into position. This is incredibly helpful when teaching the robot a new waypoint. Simply press the button and move the robot where you need it. Push the teach button on the screen and you've logged that waypoint. Should you need to fine tune the location, you can do so via jog buttons, joint sliders, or manually modify the coordinates on the screen. The robot is so easy to program. If an end user already has their end of arm tooling figured out, many pick and place applications are typically running within 24 hours of receiving the robot. Another question I get asked frequently is where does Universal Robots fit into a factory automation solution? Great question. Really, anywhere where you can use human scale, human speed automation. Many of our customers have situations where they aren't looking to reduce headcount. They would just rather use their employees to do things that only humans can do. Great applications would include virtually any type of machine tending application. And if you think about it, anywhere where you have an operator standing in front of a machine doing repetitive motions and they aren't making any complex judgment calls, these operations would be good candidates as well. The funny thing is, these jobs generally have the lowest employee satisfaction and the highest number of injuries caused by repetitive motions. So it makes them even more attractive potentials for employers to look at. These applications include taking parts in and out of machining centers, feeding stamping machines, and part presses, even removing finished parts from a plastic molding injection machine. Others would include deburring, polishing, insertion applications for various types of threaded and non-threaded fasteners. Assembly applications are great targets, whether they're precision or not. Packaging applications would include palletizing, depalletizing, stacking, destacking. If a person is currently doing the operation, and when at full capacity, they are not the bottleneck for the manufacturing line, likely this is a good operation as well. The great news is, not only can the robot go at least as fast as the operator, but it will always be there on time, it's extremely repeatable, and you only have to train it once. As well, it doesn't take breaks or lunch. Imagine just recouping the time lost to breaks and lunch and shift changes. For most companies, that would be an immediate 12.5% increase in production. So are there applications where you shouldn't use a UR solution? Certainly. Anywhere where you need superhuman speed or load carrying capacity, if a human operator is maxed out and you need to go faster, it likely won't be a good fit, unless obviously you can pick up more parts than the operator could. Traditional welding applications or heavy material removal application, likely not a good fit. Anywhere where you need explosion proof solutions, such as solvent based paint boosts as well, not a good fit. Lastly, if you aren't able to use a protective boot, the UR solutions are not suitable where washdown is necessary. Pulling this all together, Universal Robots has created a new market segment in industrial robots. They aren't trying to go after the applications that are in the sweet spot for traditional robot manufacturers. They have focused their energies on creating a solution that has a low enough cost of ownership that it can be used to automate operations that would never have made good business sense before. 
So if you have a human scale operation that you'd like to benefit from, a collaborative, easy to program, cost effective, portable, and quick to deploy robotic solution, give us a call. We'd be glad to review the application with you, as well as the business case, and help you determine if Universal Robots would be a good fit. Thanks, and have a great day.